In addition to Mars, the scientific community is investigating other planets within the solar system. Mercury and Venus, due to their extremely hot climates, have been ruled out. Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, due to their extremely cold climates, are not worthy of consideration either. Saturn and Jupiter are the only two left, two gassy giants where life seems impossible. These planets, however, have satellites orbiting around them that are arousing scientific interest. In the case of Jupiter, the moons Io and Europa, two satellites which, thanks to the energy of the planet they orbit, are much hotter than what was expected, given their great distance from the Sun. Io is the satellite with the most volcanoes in eruption in the entire solar system which is a positive symptom. Due to the history of the Earth, it is known that volcanoes can play a fundamental role in the generation of life. In contrast, however, signs of water have not been detected yet, which for the moment reduces the hope of finding life. Europa seems to be a more gifted contender. Its frozen surface may shelter an enormous ocean below with organic molecules. If these were to exist, just as it happened on Earth, the discharge of some kind of energy may provoke the appearance of life. And in this aspect, there are also indications that the moon Europa has volcanoes, which is why some scientists hope that life exists or has existed there. So Mars is our best candidate, but um, on a longer time scale, I think the exploration of Europa is going to be interesting. There's every reason to believe there is an, a long-standing water body, an ocean, if you will, on Europa, and that could have incubated life. It may actually have a higher probability than Mars of actually having still living organisms. So we might be able to look by biological techniques for life on Europa, whereas on Mars, I think largely it's going to be a paleontological exercise. In the orbit around Saturn, there is a satellite called Titan, which with a diameter less than half the size of the Earth, is very similar to our planet in other aspects. In 1980, the Voyager 1 spacecraft passed by Titan at a distance of 7,000 kilometers, which enabled it to carry out a detailed study. The images show a disturbing orange atmosphere with a touch of blue on the horizon, mainly made up of methane. According to the scientists who studied the data, the smell of the air of Titan should be like the inside of an oil refinery. Methane is the star gas of this satellite. It is suspected that it may exist in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. So perhaps there are giant oceans of methane with polar ice caps made up of this compound. It is also possible that there is an evaporation cycle and methane rain is produced. If this were true, it could be compared with the earth and water, as if methane were able to fulfill the role that water plays on our planet. In this case, cells could exist that have methane in their interior, just like ours have water. If this hypothesis of methane beings were true, we would be dealing with organisms that live at very low temperatures with very slow biochemistry. One of the key attributes for life on Earth is the presence of water. And I think it's fair to say that in most astrobiological exploration, uh, people look for water first. And then if there is water on a planet or a moon, then perhaps there will be some sort of life. So the question becomes, is there another substance that might do the same job as water? Um, and it has been suggested from time to time that methane could um, be a substitute for water as a substrate for life. Um, if so, it's not easy to imagine what kind of life that would be. 
Um, certainly it would not be a life that would be easily recognizable in terms of our experience on Earth. Um, whether or not it's impossible, I, I don't know, but I, I would certainly think it would be much less probable than a life uh, that is based on a, on a watery environment. And so in that regard, when we think about a place like Titan, well, perhaps Titan could have given rise to life. It certainly has given rise to complex organic molecules. But in the absence of water, I think the probability that life would have emerged from that chemistry is much, much lower. In 1998, the Cassini spacecraft was sent into space with Saturn as its destination. One of its missions is to study Titan, thanks to its atmospheric probe, which will descend down onto Titan's surface. This will take place in 2004. Starting then, perhaps the mystery of the methane satellite can be deciphered. The first explorations of the solar system have not provided proof of extraterrestrial life. But the absence of evidence, as paradoxical as it may seem, increases the belief that life is possible. The mechanisms of life are better understood today. Furthermore, it is also known that life can develop in much more open conditions than was originally believed. The question is, what kind of life are we dealing with? Instead of beings with antennae and extraordinary abilities, more realistic scientists assert that there is no intelligent life in our immediate cosmic environment. It's one thing to find unicellular organisms on a planet, but it's something very different to believe that these beings necessarily evolve into such complex forms as human beings. If Earth is the point of reference, the data is devastating. Of the millions of species that have prospered here, only one has been able to develop technological intelligence. We can then say, well, what are the conditions that might um, favor intelligent life? And certainly one is environmental. You certainly need an environment that's capable of sustaining the biology of a large organism. And on, on our planet, that only became possible when oxygen rose to high concentrations in the atmosphere. And then second, one can ask what kind of lifestyles would facilitate the origin of intelligence. And there certainly predation is important. Once you have to get your food by capturing prey, there is strong selective pressure for very, very sophisticated sensory apparatus and the neurological ability to integrate sensory apparatus. And there's also a very strong selective um, selective forces favoring highly s sophisticated muscular systems and again a highly sophisticated coordination of the neurological and muscular systems. Once those were in place, then I think the basic biological attributes that could lead to intelligence were there. <laughs>